chapter 24. When in the presence of the master, our mind ceases to be a hindrance to seeing reality, there comes the dawn of a new intuitional understanding of all spiritual teaching given in the so-called far-off past, as well as in our days by those who themselves have realized the truth. I noticed that unexpectedly, questions and problems which some time ago were unintelligible or postponed for later solution have solved themselves. First of all, the wish to reconcile these teachings intellectually has disappeared. I now see how shallow and futile is such a wish to judge and compare systems and their particular goals given in different times and to different races of humanity. It was my mania some time ago. I wanted to find at any cost some definite and comfortable synthesis and cling to it for my own satisfaction. Now I see that it leads nowhere, that it is a sheer waste of time and a wandering in darkness, for such an objective synthesis cannot exist. On the other hand, I see that there are as many paths as there are different consciousnesses in manifestation in one or another form of existent life. A friend once expressed the opinion that there are many ways of approaching the one being and that every lesson ultimately leads to truth. I now see the basic tragic misunderstanding. What is it that we have to know? Is it the innumerable varieties of material forms or our individual reactions to them? It is clear that such a process of acquiring knowledge never finds real fulfillment. As each manifested form corresponds to some thought, so each thought is accompanied by a new form, another subject for our examination and our new knowledge. Why cannot people understand this simple truth? There is not, nor can there be, any hope of acquiring objective knowledge about all the forms of existence, and there can be no end to such an endeavor. The goal would recede further and further, and no one would ever see its end. Maharshi says, To try to know the forms which exist in time and space would be as nonsensical as for a man who has just been shaved or had his hair cut to brood over the fate of each of these hairs. They will be thrown into a dustbin or burned. In either case, there will be no further contact between them and their original owner. The past is also an illusion of the transient imagination. It can never return nor repeat its meaning for those who were once its actors. In this fact, we discover why and how human beings are apt to add so much to the bitterness and suffering of their lives. They forever chew over the cud of past experiences, which do not exist anymore thus missing the meaning of the now. They live in the past instead of plunging into the present and living it to the full. Self-knowledge or realization stops these aimless errings. I know that time and space do not exist for the sage who I am now facing, and I see in this fact a joyous hope for myself. This is an initiation. I know the life of the Maharshi in all its details, as given by his nearest followers in their various writings. While the young Ramana, still at home with his parents, was reading the history of the 63 Tamil saints, there arose spontaneously within his heart a firm determination to become one of them. Similarly, when looking at the Maharshi, the only desire left in our hearts is to become like him. 
a power which cannot be compared with anything in the world, compels us to see our highest and final goal in uniting with the consciousness of the sage. And for one moment, this vision becomes reality. For silence is one and all-embracing. All life is merged in silence, and everything that is beyond this life the unchangeable and infinitely blissful, with no qualities and therefore with no limitations. The words of one of the less known Western mystics are really true when he says that God and truth are so simple and at the same time so dazzling that if God would manifest himself in all his shining splendor, No planet could stand it, but would instantly be turned to ashes. It may be, of course, an allegory, but I know that it contains a mystic truth. It is an initiation. Here, at the feet of the sage, I have made peace with the world. It has ceased to be an alien giant incomprehensible in all its endless intricacies. And those whom I see as men no longer appear as separate and foreign beings, for the same innermost and unchanging principle which resides in me also dwells in all my brethren. This feeling is awakened by practicing Maharshi's instruction when he says, when you meet someone Think deeply. It is God who dwells in this body. Then comes initiation forever.